this vessel, we will be looking at chemical equilibrium. So if we look at these, before I head to the topic, let's just look at these three containers. Right? I'm going to use them to tell us what equilibrium is. So, right, so equilibrium basically means equilibrium basically means a balance. Right? So if you think of a seesaw, right, let's let's use this. We have the eraser. Resting the marker on it. If the marker balances, then we have an equilibrium established, just like a seesaw. But if I do this, it will fall off because it is not balanced. Right? No. If we are looking at these three containers, right? So, what I did was use universal indicator. But what we are focusing on is the colors. Now, this is one extreme, right? And this is one extreme. But when we have a balance, we will get the green color. So, when we are going to look at equilibrium, because that is a reaction. Now, equilibrium represents a balance. Okay? But not all, not all, not all of our reactions can achieve a balance. So we're just using the colors here to represent our balance. Let us say this container here represents reactance. Right? This is the products. Right? Now with equilibrium, most of the reactions that you are used to just occurs in one direction. From reactance to products. That's it. So the most of the reactions you would have been used to is going from reactants to products. But there are some reactions that occurs in both directions. Going from reactants to products. And the products will become the reactants to form back here. Reactants in this case. So reactants to products. The products are going to react with each other to form back the reactant molecules. So before, you would have just used to reactants going to products. The topic of, equi of chemical equilibrium, we are going to look at the reactions in which once you get the products, the products will react again to form back your reactants. So, it's, so, the, so two reactions will be occurring. Products forming reactants, reactants forming products, products forming reactants. But with this type of reaction, it will reach a point where the rates will become equal. So the rate at which the forward reaction is occurring, so the forward reaction would be going from our reactants to products. And the reverse reaction will be from the products going to the reactants. Now let us say when the reaction goes to completion, we get blue, slightly pinkish color. Right? This color represents the reaction going to completion. Right? But remember now, this reaction, we are not looking at the reaction when it goes to completion because the products that are formed are going to react with each other to form back the reactants. So what will happen is that we, we will reach a point where the rate at which the reactants are colliding to form products will be equal to the rate at which your products are colliding to form back the reactants. So what will happen is that now, if you are observing the reaction, right, in terms of a color change, when equilibrium is achieved, right, we will have a color, right? So this color represents 
the balance between the two reactions. So this color represents neutrality. So what I add is adding universal indicator. This is acidic and this is basic. Right? So this is the color in acidic condition, this is the color in basic con the basic conditions. And this is it when it is neutral. So we are using the, the neutral color to represent when the system is in chemical equilibrium. Remember, with chemical equilibrium, the reaction is not going to completion. So you cannot get this color. So for an equilibrium reaction, you would not get this color. Right? Because this color represents the reaction going to completion in one direction. And this color represents the reaction going to completion in the other direction. But when equilibrium is achieved, because the process is going in both directions, right? And so it will reach a point where the two grades are equal. So nothing is going to change from that point. And so you will end up with this color. Good? So when you reach equilibrium, nothing is going to change. Right? It represents a balance, as I said before. So once chemical equilibrium is achieved, nothing will appear to change. Let me put it that way. So this green color, so if we were looking at the reaction, once equilibrium is achieved and you get this color, then nothing more will occur. Right? So the color will stay green. Right? However, we should know that even though the color will stay green, that does not mean our reaction is not occurring. When you get the green color, reactants are still being converted to products. Products are still being converted to reactants. But the thing is that they are going at the same rate. So if the rates are equal, then you will not, you will never notice a change in the appearance. If one of the rate, however, gets faster than the, than the other, that is when the color will change. Because for equilibrium to be achieved, the rates have to be equal. So, the only time this color would have changed is if we did something to speed up the rate of one of the reactions, right? So, let us put this system out of equilibrium. So, I have acid here. So, remember, this represents chemical equilibrium. That means both rates are equal. In this container, I have some acid. So remember, this direction represents the acid. So I'm just going to add some acid to this. And this will represent our reaction no longer being in equilibrium. But if I add just the right amount of base, we will get it back in equilibrium. So the point I want you to take away from this is what exactly is our equilibrium reaction and how we can know that it is achieved. So the color before it was green, right? So when we achieve equilibrium, we have to look at the macroscopic properties, right? It's the properties that are quantifiable. So when you look and you see that it is green, and it is not changing, you have achieved equilibrium, right? But on a molecular level, reactants are still colliding to form products. Products are colliding to form reactants. So for chemical equilibrium, what type of reaction are we going to look at? We are not going to look at reactions that goes to completion. That is from one extreme to the next, right? We are looking at reversible reactions. So let's go. So first, chemical equilibrium, if we're looking for a definition, 
the just told you it's a condition achieved in a chemical reaction. Not just any chemical reaction. It must be a reversible chemical reaction. So it's a condition achieved in the reaction where the, where the rate of a forward reaction equals the rate of the reverse reaction. Now, they will also use the term di dynamic chemical equilibrium. That is what I was explaining. When you reach chemical equilibrium, the reaction will appear to cease. Because remember the container here, it was green. So it had a green color. Let me just do it again. This one, right? It was green. So once it is reached equilibrium, this will stay green. It is not going to change to any of these other color. So just looking at the reaction, just looking at the color of the mixture, you would say the reaction has come has gone to completion. It stopped, right? But you must remember that even though the, color, the reason why the color is not changing because the two rates are become equal. So just because the color is not changing does not mean the reaction <coughs> is not occurring. And that is what dynamic chemical equilibrium refers to. So it's a condition, right, where both rates are equal, but your macroscopic properties may stay constant. So looking at the reaction, it will appear to have reached completion. Right? Nothing is going to change on a macroscopic level, right? So the color will stay the same. However, within the reaction, reactants are still colliding to form products, and products are still colliding to form reactants. So dynamic, the reaction is still occurring. We also have static equilibrium. Now static equilibrium the difference with that is, once it is achieved, that is it. So, we have our eraser. There's the mark on it, right? So, that is it, right? Equilibrium, the mark has been balanced. This represents equilibrium, the color is green. But the difference between this ear and this ear is that, is that a reaction is still occurring. So even though you cannot see that a reaction is occurring, it is still occurring, but the rates are just equal. So dynamic means that it is an ongoing process, but nothing appears to change. So the equilibrium comes from this, looking at it, it appears to be the same, right? But a reaction is still occurring. That makes it dynamic. This is static, nothing is changing. Once the problem is achieved, that's it. It's balanced right there, nothing is moving. In your dynamic, rep molecules are still colliding. Rep <coughs> Reptants are still being formed. Reptants are colliding to form products. Products are colliding to form reptants. So that is what dynamic is versus static. Now, to, be, to reach to chemical equilibrium, there are certain conditions that must be achieved. One of them is that the reaction must occur in a closed vessel. As I said before, the rate of the forward reaction must equal the rate of the reverse reaction. And it must take place at constant temperature and pressure, and we will see why earlier, a little later. Okay, so we said that the reaction must occur in a closed system. So, in this container of hydrochloric acid and magnesium ribbon.
Now, this reaction, equilibrium cannot be achieved. Remember, for equilibrium to be achieved, right, is a two is a reversible reaction. When the reactants are converted to products, the products must be able to collide and form back here reactants. But this container is open. When you react magnesium with hydrochloric acid, one of the products is hydrogen gas. And the hydrogen gas is escaping. So if one of your products is lost from the system, then a reversible reaction cannot occur. Hydrogen gas is escaping, one of the products has just escaped. So we cannot achieve equilibrium in an open system. All right, if you look at this container, all right, you can see that droplets, water droplets, are formed on the inside, right? And you notice it is closed. That means what is happening here, because the bottle was closed and left for a period of time, when the water was evaporating, it, the container was closed, so it could not escape. So, so this represents your vapor condensing. So in this reaction, this, is, this can be viewed as a reaction right here. You have the water down here, right? Some of the molecules break away from the surface and escape as vapor. But because the container is closed, the vapors can the, the water vapor cannot escape. So the reverse reaction is condensation. So we have both evaporation and condensation occurring. Condensation is able to occur because the, co because the container is closed. So the forward reaction would be evaporation. The, the molecules of, of water are escaping. But the container is closed, so it cannot escape the, the container. Right? So, it, so we get no uh, reverse reaction which is condensation and of course it will reach a point where the two weights are equal so these two the first example and this example explain why equilibrium must be must occur in a closed system huh? good now once equilibrium is achieved there are certain factors that will disrupt the equilibrium. So we are going to look now at the factors uh, that will disrupt our equilibrium. So remember what is chemical equilibrium is just a condition achieved in a reversible reaction where the forward rate and the reverse rate are equal. It is also said to be dynamic it is also said to be dynamic because when you look at it it will appear as if no change is occurring but on a molecular level reactants are being converted to products products are being converted to reactants and once it, for equal to be achieved the weights must be equal the system the container must be closed temperature must be constant the pressure is also constant and you should also make note the concentration the concentration of the reactants and products remain constant do not say the reactants are and products are equal, they are not equal, they remain constant. That's a difference. So at equilibrium, the concentration of the reactants and products remain constant. They are not equal, they remain constant. Good. 
So now we are going to look at how we can disrupt a system at equilibrium. And to do that, we will look at the Chapelier's principle. And there are a few ways you can see this, right? But the basic, but the essence of the principle is that when you have a system at equilibrium, if you disturb, if you do something that disturbs that equilibrium, interferes with it, so that the system is no longer at equilibrium, then the reaction itself will change, will shift in a direction to counteract the change. So again, let's look at these three containers. This represents products, this represents reactant, and this represents when the reaction is at equilibrium. When it is at equilibrium, if you interfere with this container, if you interfere with it so that the color, let's say the color, it changed to pink. So green, let's say you add more acid to this container and it gets this color, right? The reaction, right, will now work in such a way that equilibrium is once again achieved, right? So it's you, so basically you are interfering with the system and the system is counteracting whatever change is made. So, the Chantier principle states that if a stress is applied to a reaction at equilibrium, or you can say to a system at equilibrium, the equilibrium may shift in a direction to counter the stress applied. Alright, so the first stress that we are going to look at is concentration. So okay, we are looking at concentration, temperature and pressure. So those are the, those are the three conditions that we will look at. So let's give a general reaction. Let's say A to produce B. Now if you have A to produce B written like this, this means that the reaction occurs one direction and it goes to completion. A to produce B. But remember we are looking at equilibrium. So when B is formed, B will collide with each other to form A. So it's a reversible reaction. So we use two arrows. 
into produce B into produce A. So this represents a reaction at the equilibrium, the two arrows. Now we are looking at what are the conditions that we can change to disturb this system at equilibrium. So let us say that this system is at equilibrium. And we increase, so the first condition we are going to look at is concentration. system at the equilibrium, the system is going to shift in a direction to counteract the stress. So the, so the stress here would be us increasing the amount of B. So we have the close to the we are going to add more B to the system. Right? So when we increase the concentration of B, Opposite of increasing the, the concentration of B must be to decrease the concentration of B. Right? So the stress here, so this. So the stress is to increase the concentration of B. So if the stress is to increase the concentration of B, then the counteraction. So the counter to the increase in B must be decreased in the concentration of B. So if we increase the concentration of B, the opposite, so the counter, or the opposite, must be to, to decrease the concentration of B. Now, if we are going to decrease the concentration of B, which way will the equilibrium shift? This side, our right hand side is the left, and the product is the right. If the equilibrium is to be right, then what is on the right? B. So the equilibrium is going to the right, shifting to the right. When we say shift, it is favoring. Then, whenever we use the term shift, we mean favor. Right? So shifting to the left or right means that it's going to the left or right. No. If it is favored, so whichever direction is favored, what will happen? Favor in terms of this concept here. If you are favored, then more of the molecules, more of the molecules will be produced. And when we say the equilibrium shift, it is favoring a direction. When that, if that direction is favored, what will happen? more of those molecules will be produced. So let's look back at the stress. The stress is increase in concentration of B. That is what we did. The counter is what the system is going to do. So the system must decrease the concentration of B. Now if B is to the right, that means the system must go to the left. So it must favor the left. If it shifts to the left, it has to produce more of what? A. So let's go on. We said the system is going to shift to the left. If it shifts to the left, it is favoring the left. If it is favoring the left, it is producing more of the molecules on the left than it is on the right. So when we increase the concentration of B, the system is going to decrease the concentration of B 
by doing what? By shifting to the left. What happens when it shifts to the left? The concentration of A increases. Right? And the concentration of B decreases. So what happens? We increase the concentration of B, the system does the opposite. It decreases the concentration of B. But we have to know how it will be achieved. Remember, it's a reverse direction. The system, it can only shift left or right. So whatever you will do to the system, it will do the opposite by shifting either to the left or to the right. So we need to assess and see which way it will shift. <coughs> because it wants to decrease the concentration of B, and B is on the right, it must shift to the left. When it shifts to the left, it means we are favoring left. It means that at this point, the rates are not equal. When, you are, when the equilibrium is favoring a particular direction, the rates are not equal. The rates were equal when it was at equilibrium. Once you apply a stress, the rates are no longer equal. That is what the system is doing now. It is counteracting this stress so that the system, so that the rates, the forward and reverse rate, can once again become equal. So it is favoring A. So when it favors A, concentration of A will increase. Once concentration of A increase and B is decreasing, so look what will happen. A is the A is the reactant, right? So at the start of the reaction you will have no product and all of the reactant. But as the reactant starts to collide with each other to form products, then the products are going to start to increase and the reactants are going to start to decrease, right? It will reach a point, now remember, once the product starts to form, they are going to be colliding and forming back here, reactants. So it will reach a point where both of the reaction rates become equal. Okay. So this one is our reactant. This one is our product. Okay. So at the start of the reaction, you will have reactants and no products. But once the reactant starts to collide, they will form their product. And the product will start to collide and form back here reactants. So this the, this diagram is showing where is representing the reversible reaction. Right here now, this is what is representing equilibrium. At this point, both the forward rate and the reverse rate are equal. Now, let us apply so that put this as A and this as B. Hmm? So, let us apply a stress to this system at the equilibrium. If we increase the concentration of B, what will happen? So let's say at equilibrium we have four, 
Let's say we have six molecules that B, and let's put some more. Let's say we have eight molecules of B, and four molecules of A. All right? But remember now we said that when equilibrium is achieved, it does not mean the concentrations are equal. It means that the concentration is constant. So, let us say this is in our equilibrium, and then and the, at this point, the rates are <coughs> the rates are equal. Then we go now and add some more molecules of B. Let's say we add four molecules of B. So let's say for every molecule of A, we have two molecules of B. We will go and add four molecules of B. Obviously now, the rates cannot be equal again because you have more molecules of B. But this means that B is going to collide at a faster rate than A. Remember, you did not interfere with the concentration of A. You increased the concentration of B. But that means that now, the molecules of B are colliding faster. If you remember rates, to increase the concentration, the rate will increase. So increasing the concentration of B means that the rate at which B is formed in A is now faster than the rate at which A is forming B. So let us say that two molecules of B react and collide to form a molecule of A. Right? Before two more of A can react to form B. Right? No. When you form A, the rate of A now is going to increase because when B collides faster and form A, the concentration of A has now gone up. So the rate of A will increase while the rate of B will drop now because some of the molecules have now been converted to A. So that is why equilibrium will again be achieved because the rate of B will be faster than A. So it will form A quicker than A can form B. Let's show that again, right? And let's put down this one. So if you increase the concentration of B, what will happen is that B now it will not be an equilibrium again. It would have increased, right? So this is if you have increased the concentration of B, so it will not be an equilibrium again, right? It will go. The rate will increase now, right? And so what will happen now? B now is forming A quicker than A is forming B, right? So when that happens, the concentration of A is also going to increase. So A will not be here anymore. The new concentration of A will also increase. So let's just go, so let's just do something like this. Right? All right, this video is going to finish in a minute, so I'm going to stop it here. I'm going to stop here and continue in part two. So I'm going to finish the explanation for this for this video in part two. Mm.